soldiers of the French Foreign Legion pass in review in honor of the American forces. Guards in the traditional uniform of the Legionnaires. Spies, crack Arab cavalrymen. These scenes were photographed December 7, 1942, at Sidi Bel Abbas and the Governor's Palace at Algiers. General Darlan in the center of the picture, with General Clark on the right and General Anderson on the left. Mr. Robert Murphy, United States Minister to North Africa. The General Grants go to sea. These ships are known as tank landing craft. They are specially constructed for transporting armored vehicles and are highly maneuverable. In the background, the city of Algiers looks down on the harbor. Because of its slight superstructure and lack of silhouette, the tank landing craft is less vulnerable as a target. The black band around the waist of each soldier is a self-inflating life preserver. Needlework. An Allied convoy bound for the port of Bone moves eastward through the Mediterranean, escorted by British men of war. under the control of the Allied forces, is 212 miles from the city of Tunis. It is the seaport nearest enemy-held territory. One by one, the General Grants roll ashore. These mobile fortresses are armed with 37 millimeter and 75 millimeter guns, and with 30 caliber and 50 caliber machine guns. Step on a jank, the Nazis have airports in Sicily and they're only an hour away. A 
A British supply ship unloads its cargo of ammunition. Pass the ammunition and handle it gently. They come in high. Our any aircraft goes into action. Every fifth one is a tracer bullet. These street scenes were photographed by a concealed camera and reveal the true and varied reactions of the public during the raid. takes to the air. This is one of the Allied airfields in the vicinity of Bow. American P-38s rise to the attack. This is a dogfight. Spitfire dives on a Messerschmitt. P-38s and Spitfires against Messerschmitts and Junkers. This is a Messerschmitt.
These are wrecked German planes. Parachute flares dropped on the harbor from an enemy plane seeking to locate the supply ships. Tracer shells go after them. This was a Junkers 88. Most of the bombs fell in the city. stands for victory everywhere. The surrounding countryside is littered with the wreckage of Nazi planes. This is a Dornier. All that is left of a Messerschmitt. The crew of this one was captured. The final score, 14 Nazi planes shot down against a loss of four of our own. No important installations were hit and our tank convoy suffered no casualties. Convoy heads for the Tunisian front. American transport planes loaded with supplies follow us as we advance. Sukaras, the General Grants climb a range of the Atlas Mountains. Dispatch riders speed ahead. Here, the roads are hard and fast as compared with other sections of North Africa.
tanks keep 150 yards apart, thus presenting a difficult target for a surprise air attack. Whenever the General Grants come to a halt, camouflage is the first order. The difference between a good and bad job may very easily be the difference between life and death. Bedded down for the night. Always on the alert. what American paratroopers look like after jumping from a plane at dawn, landing deep in enemy territory, accomplishing their mission, and marching 30 miles overland in full pack under a hot African sun. transportation arteries open is of primary importance. French soldiers guard all roads, bridges, and strategic points. P-38 circle overhead, providing an aerial umbrella for our convoy. Take a good look, Yank. You better make sure. of a daylight attack. The Nazis not only bombed the train, but repeatedly machine gunned it from a low level. Every car was plainly marked with a red cross. Buying chickens from the Arabs. The Arabs at all times were most helpful in their efforts to provide poultry and green vegetables. You got it! Thank <laughs> you. 
The distances are marked in kilometers. 100 kilometers is roughly 62 miles. This is a road barricade erected by the French. It will not stop a tank, but it will cause it to slow down and make a turn. Again, note the protective distances between the vehicles. The convoy leaves Algeria and crosses the Tunisian frontier. This church was bombed and shelled repeatedly. starts when a lone Nazi plane dives out of the sky, comes in very low, and unloads its bombs. Watch the plane. Watch it. There they go. A gasoline dump is hit. Come from all directions. American casualties from bomb fragments. Wounded RAF pilots, victims of strafing. Shell shock.
an armored American ambulance. Here they come again. Watch the plane. There go the bombs. They light on the road outside of town. up in flames. salutes the Americans and welcomes them to North Africa. Maneuvers. Italian paratroop insignia. Convoy nears enemy held territory, each tank commander receives his allotment of detailed war maps. This is a dispersal area. The tanks are spread out as far as the eye can see. Contour maps are vital in tank warfare where there are no fixed lines and the positions change from hour to hour.
rain and thunder clouds. Dispersed, awaiting a break in the weather and better visibility. This is a fluid battle area. Tunis, to Borba, Medjiz el -Bab. The battle will be fought here. There are no set fortifications or clearly defined opposing lines. A Nazi panzer division has advanced westward from Tunis. Our columns have come up the valley from Medjiz el -Bab. Our attack will consist of a series of lunges against the armored spearhead of the panzer division. The sun comes out. Our armored vehicles move toward the forward positions. This is an American light tank used both for fighting and scouting. P-38s move ahead of the advancing forces. A Spitfire guards the road. A British scout car advances along the northern flank. American half-tracks follow on reconnaissance. Enemy activity has been sighted over the hill to the left of the picture. British 25-pounders open up. The battery commander corrects the range. Black smoke indicates a hit on a supply dump or an enemy ammunition carrier. The Yanks are ready. In this type of mobile warfare, there are no trenches, no large concentrations of infantry. The doughboys are spread out for miles behind every tree and shrub, ready to strike the enemy or repel infiltration. Enemy snipers machine gun our infantry positions. This is the actual battlefield. Germans on the left, Americans on the right. A British ammunition lorry is hit. These are German Mark IV tanks. 
The straw-covered barns in the foreground conceal Nazi 88-millimeter anti-tank guns. These scenes were photographed from a hill overlooking the battlefield. The cameraman is actually nearer the German lines than his own. Note the red identification marks on the rear of the German tanks. This is to avoid attack from their own aircraft. Artillery begins to find the range. Watch the tank in the center of the picture. of the screen has struck the center tank. It spins around, disabled. There are ten German tanks in this spearhead, five on the field, and five concealed under the brow of the hill in foreground. The tank in the background has stalled. Its crew is still using the machine guns. There it goes. direct hit on an enemy 88 millimeter gun position. Black smoke indicates the end. Enemy prisoners are brought in under guard. Note the two guards following in the rear. The invincible Nazi on the left side of the screen carries the white flag of surrender. These prisoners are veteran members of the Africa Corps. These are Americans, boys from your town and my town. They have fought today in a strange country for a remote little valley on the road to Tunis. And they have fought well. This is an important victory, not because of its strategic value, not because of its military importance, but for an altogether different reason. This morning when the battle began, this valley was a conquered valley in the hands of the enemy. Tonight, it is a free valley.